Hello my CNC brother or sister, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and welcome to this weekend update video where I just get to talk to you, you know, soul to soul type of thing instead of everything CNC. I want to share something with you that it's more on a personal level, why I'm inspired to do what I do and the reason I want to share this with you is because I think we all relate to the story I'm about to tell you of a brother CNCer, or soon to be CNCer, I guess, that um, I had a little dialogue with. And then I want to share with you a little bit about my story and where I've come to and where I'm going based on that insatiable desire to make a difference in the world. And, that way that, that I really want to make a difference to you and to our brothers and sisters. So this story starts off like this. I got an email earlier in the week from, a, we'll just say John, right? For anonymity's sake. Now John is a brother CNCer or soon to be CNCer who's been watching some of the videos I've been creating for you and our brothers and sisters. And it was kind of a long email where John shared a bit of his life story, pretty much. I mean, he, he's about 60 and is working in like a mid-level management profession and coming into retirement or getting close to it. Uh, was in the services. And I'm not sure what it was about the email that caught my attention. But uh, at the end of the email, he asked me if, uh, if I could talk to him. I, he'd, he'd really enjoy it. And because of whatever it was in the email, I said, okay, yeah, there's something. I'm going to talk to this guy. <laughs> of course, if I did that with all the emails I got, <coughs> I'd, be <talking> on the <coughs> I'd be talking on the phone all day long, every day, and never create <laughs> videos for you. But I decided to get on the phone. And John was telling me, I don't know, he's just kind of asking what CNC he should get or if he should get it or maybe he should do this or do that. And I felt like after about 10 minutes, the conversation was going around in circles. Like we weren't getting to helping him make a decision as to what he wants to do. And so I finally stopped him and I said, John, you know, can I talk to you like brother to brother? And he said, yeah, sure. I said, there's something deeper. That, that you're not sharing with me. I can sense it. And he was quiet for a while. I was like, John, are you there? John? Literally, it was like that. And I'm about to hang up, and he said, I'm here. And I could tell by the way he said that, that he was crying. It's kind of interesting, people our age, right? Uh, we're not supposed to cry. But I'm glad that he did, right? I mean, it's crying is a release from, <laughs> from uh, whatever it may be that we're holding back from. Or two, two things, right? Either we're holding ourselves back from something and we just, we try to cover it up with we justify it. Oh, I got to go to work. I can't do that. I don't have enough money. I can't do that. Uh, maybe I'll do that some other day. That kind of thing. The other reason that we cry is, of course, loss. But John's case was this sudden awareness that he wasn't doing what he wanted to do in life. He had lost his oomph for his career uh, years ago, but just kind of mold on doing what he thought he should be doing. And I asked him, why are you holding yourself back? Why don't you just buy a machine? And I don't know, he, he just said he didn't think he could make it. He didn't think he could make it work, work with the computer. He didn't think that uh, it, well, he was worried about money. And so we got to talking about this whole idea of we worry about money and about our inability to be able to do things more than just taking the plunge. 
And this kind of comes around to my whole mission with you and our brothers and sisters of just do it, right? Because we have this spiritual call inside of us to be something to the world. And that changes as life goes on. One of the things I do know, I've seen this many, many times, of people who, after they hit 50, they start to question themselves, <laughs> right? Am I really living the life I want to live? Am I really going after my dream? Or is the world out there in charge of me? I hit that moment when, after my wife died, a year after that, <clears throat> when my best friend got cancer. And I was really raw, and I was already questioning myself, of, is this the life I want to live? What haven't I done? And my best friend Bob, the last time I saw him before he died, we were talking, and he, we were at a park, and he, he just went out into space for a minute. <clears throat> and I asked him, Bob, you, you okay? And he just kind of just turned and looked at me with that weird look. It was a sad look. And he said, Garrett, if I could do it again, I would have lived in Sedona. I would have traveled more. I wouldn't have been with that person. I would have done this. this I mean, the list went on, right? But all it just took that first moment, right, when he said, if I could do it again, I would have lived in Sedona. He lived in Cincinnati, <laughs> right? I could see in that second, the regret that he had. The man was on his deathbed and suddenly he could look back in, the, in, in his rearview mirror and say and see all the things that he didn't do that he wished he could do, but he didn't do them because he was afraid. That something inside of him was holding him back and the world was holding him back. There were rules that, that he had to live in, that we all have to live in, right? But I, I guess I view it as presumed rules or assumed rules because I've been through that too. Right, But it took that moment for me to say, I will never say those words on my deathbed, ever. And so I went out to play for about seven years, right? Work was secondary, but then money was getting a little tight, right? And I was starting to realize, shit, I've, I've got to do something. But I knew that I, I, I didn't want to work anymore. By the time I was done playing over the seven, eight years, the engineer in me was dead but I didn't know what needed to come alive, but I knew there was something in here. It took about two years to figure it out and doing what we do, buy into education, and we're just searching, right? I'm, I'm searching, buying these things to, uh, buying stocks, buying whatever. I was always thinking it was money, right? Until I came across the mentor that I have now. And this guy ripped the rug from under my feet. Dan Locke. You can find him on YouTube. And I got into his program and he really opened up my eyes and, and it's just like, I realized that the only thing that was holding me back was me. And with John, the only thing that was holding him back was him. Sometimes we just need that right person to be safe enough to talk to, to say, you know what, inside, deep, deep inside, I really don't feel happy, but I don't know what will make me happy. And so the story goes on with John after he stopped crying and we kind of dug in and he just said, I want my own thing, right? And he said, I'm, I'm worried about my future. I'm getting out of the workforce and, and I don't feel like I'm going to matter anymore. I need something to be relevant in life. <laughs> I totally got what he said. Totally got it. Right? When 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 we we don't realize it when we like come to retirement and we're going, I can't wait for retirement. And then when we're getting close to it, it's like, what the hell am I gonna do? And that's I believe that's why a lot of people who go into retirement without a plan end up just getting really, really unhappy. So anyway. I got into a program with Dan Locke and went through his training, which I still am. He's my mentor, nine-figure mentor, shooting towards a ten-figure type of guy. And uh, <clears throat> he's got these awards for people who achieve. 
And so at the beginning of last year, and just before the, the like late in 2020, let's start here. Late in 2020, I had been doing this thing of trying to figure out what the hell it was that I wanted and trying so hard to achieve financial confidence, <laughs> get comfortable financially, know what my spiritual call was. And I just, it was like September, October, and I just, I just broke down and cried. I said, I'm so tired of trying to figure out what I need to do. Like, I was trying outside instead of inside. So, shortly after that is when I actually got into the CNC machine. I got a Bob's CNC and just started shooting videos. I had CNC experience and I said, screw it, I'm going to shoot videos to help people, whatever. And it was beginning of 2021, I decided I was going to win one of those awards that Dan Locke gives out for people who achieve, right? His whole program is about the entrepreneur side, right? We don't earn a paycheck. We get paid based on results. And the only way you can get results is by giving value first. The, the, the byproduct of giving is, is receiving financial, financial rewards. So at the beginning of the year, 2021, I decided I wanted their award. So I made this on my CNT router. So um, it's MDF. And uh, I still have to do a video how to how I created that surface. You see how shiny that is and cool. But it's the hundred uh, the six figure earner award. And it just hung on my wall, and eventually I just kind of forgot about it. You know, like anything else, it's just there, and so we don't see it from day to day. At the end of 2021, I looked at all my numbers, and I was like, holy crap. I had generated over $250,000 in revenue. And I submitted those numbers. And I got this award. The $100,000 club. <clears throat> when I received this and opened the package and I was holding it, and I'm going, holy crap. I actually, actually did this. It made me realize at that moment that whatever we put our mind to, once we release our spirit to that call, that to just trust the process, that we we can accomplish anything we want. It's it's not always easy because we got all these mental blocks up in our heads, and we don't always know what to do with it. So. This Dan Locke guy has put together uh, an advisory group, like a very high level advisory group, very difficult to get in, business advisory, where there's six, seven, eight, nine figure earners in this group. And I was able to get into it. Very honored, because it's very difficult to get in. <clears throat> and in this, there are also awards. One is the Dragon of the Year. It's, it's called the Dragon 100. You can look it up if you want. It's dragon100.com. And so I figured if this worked, I didn't get this award, by the way, because I didn't turn in all my numbers, right? <laughs> I can tell you exactly why. Because I delayed to the last minute to get my numbers in. So I got a smaller award, but it's still a very honorable award. In this organization, there's the Black Dragon Award, the Dragon X Award, Dragon Infinity Award. So the Black Dragon Award is businesses that hit a million dollars in a 12 month period. So I decided, not only am I gonna be Dragon of the Year, but I am going to achieve this award too, the Black Dragon Award. The whole, I made this on the on my CNC router, my long mill CNC router, just like I made that one. The 
point I'm trying to send home here to you is sometimes so many people are so scared to just do it. They come up with all these reasons why not to get into the CNC, even though they're, they, they feel that pull. It's like insatiable to go get a CNC router, get the program, start learning, you know, stop worrying about whether you're computer savvy or tech savvy or can you do it or can you afford it and just go do it. It comes down to this, the cost of inaction. What is the cost of inaction? by procrastinating, our worst enemy. And that cost of inaction is a perpetual quiet unhappiness and an awareness that our clock is continuing to run and there is a limit to how long that clock will run. And here's the fascinating thing when it comes to this stuff. You get into the CNC and you start designing. It's like you get in that zone where time just goes away when you're designing, when you're creating your stuff, when you're, when you're finishing your stuff. That's when you're in your spiritual zone. And if your spirit is calling you, then by all means, go get your CNC router. I'm a long mill guy. I say get a long mill CNC router and I got links down below that gives me credit. But I truly, I don't care what machine you get. What I care about is your happiness. To, to go after that thing instead of holding back and finding all these reasons that really make no logical sense. We think they make logical sense. Why well, don't we have the money? I want you to view this kind of thing. We'll, we'll use the money thing and uh, going after it thing, right? We spend so much time worrying about money, it's a negative type of energy, right? And at the same time, we're like, I want it, I want it. The cost of inaction is constant stress and worry about money. You ever notice that we worry about money and money is always short? <laughs> I learned to stop worrying about money. I stopped being afraid to write checks. Be grateful that there's amaz this amazing technology called CNC routing, CNC lasers, CNC plasma cutters that will allow us to create stuff. The cost of an action is, if, we, if you just don't act, ultimately is that same regret that Bob felt. That stress, that inner, inner sadness and maybe quiet desperation that John was feeling. The, call, the, the, the price, right, the, the reward of action is this spiritual release of, I'm doing my thing. I've got purpose again, right? Instead of going into retirement with no plan and, and falling out of relevance in the world. Go get your CNC router. Just do it. If you're on the fence, if you've just been sitting there, like not even on the fence, you're like holding on to the fence going, I don't even want to get on the fence because I'm too scared. The reward of action is that spiritual fulfillment and making stuff for other people that makes them smile. And in our age, there's one other thing that's really important, right? We start to become aware of this need to, to leave a legacy. And I feel like me, when I was back in that worry mode of, oh my God, I'm gonna spend $1,500, $2,000. What was I doing? I was holding back my ability to leave my legacy for my daughter, my grandkids, for you. Ultimately, it's, we've gotta be creative. If we're not growing, we're dying. This is my reward right for for helping you and it's not about the money it's about the fulfillment deeper than the money right that this is my my physical indicator that I am successfully helping you and our brothers become amazing creators with your CNC machine 
please, don't hold back. I've got everything you need on this channel. I give you as much as I possibly can. Every time I see people keep asking for things like, do you have a tool database, <laughs> right? I put it together for you to make your life easier so you can dig into Create. I am also putting together something else so we can dialogue like dynamically. It's a group on Telegram, right? Well, I've got the CNC Entrepreneurs Facebook group, but there's a, an app for the phone called Telegram. And Telegram allows us to talk constantly. I'm gonna encourage you to sign up to that. I'll put a link down below in the description for that. With that, you'll have to load, install the app, and then once you're in, then I'll be there, right? I mean, I can only talk to so many people at one time, but it's gonna, it's gonna fill up. But that's where we can like talk much quicker. When you have a question, you can get that question answered really fast. All right, ultimately, go after your dream. Don't let these things that worry you so much hold you back. The worst thing I've seen was somebody say, my wife would said I probably would get bored with it and so they didn't go for it, right? It's, not a, it's just another excuse for being worried. I love what I do. And because I know that love inside, I want you to love what you do. I want you to feel the same thing. So go get your CNC machine. Get the long mill, get whatever you got your eyeballs on, just do it. And I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you for hanging with me for a little bit. I got some cool things coming up. And I love you. Happy CNC. I'll talk to you next time.